here are ten stats. One for each player that can stop keeping up. Tiger Woods wins his Ho-Hum. So you find you some new butt tiger on Saturday. Hello and welcome to the Cheese Wizard. I'm DJ Gregory. All right, so even though it's the week before Christmas, we're going to do a little Major League Baseball update since the Phillies, Blue Jays, and Mariners just completed this unbelievable three-way deal that brought Roy Halladay to the Philadelphia Phillies. And everybody's been asking me what I think about this trade, so I'm just going to give you a couple points that I've been thinking about the past couple days. First, this is a great deal for the Phillies. Anytime you can go out and get somebody like Roy Halladay, it's a good move. But if you think this looks good for the Phillies now, I think it's going to look even better in June or July, and here's why. The upside on Halladay is way better than the upside on Cliff Lee. Halladay is coming from the American League, where he's had to face lineups with a designated hitter. Uh, he's going to come into the National League, where hitters haven't seen him, where he's facing a lineup that has a pitcher at the end of it. So you thought it was easy for him to get nine complete games in the American League last year. He's going to have an even easier time getting through lineups in the National League this year. And he's going to be coming to a Phillies team who is top five in almost every offensive team batting category. You think that's not good support for a guy who's pitched nine complete games last season? On the other hand, Lee's going to the American League. He'll have to face the designated hitter again. He'll have to face a lot of hitters who have already seen him. He'll have a Seattle Mariners offensive club supporting him was third worst in all of baseball in run production last year, and a Seattle Mariners club who was fifth worst in the American League in bullpen performance. So we're going to get to June or July, and I'm telling you, Halliday's numbers are going to be better than Cliff Lee's numbers, and Ruben Amaro is going to look like a genius come June or July. That's first. Second off, everybody's complaining about, well, what about the depletion of the Phillies farm system? Who cares? If you've got the bargaining chips, use them to go get you something that will help you now. Because guess what? Kyle Drabeck could be a great major league pitcher, and Michael Taylor could be a great major league outfielder, but could and be are the key words in those two sentences. Because they're not yet, and who knows if they ever will be. And if you can use them now to get something good that could take you back to the World Series in 2010, you do it. No questions asked. Okay. Last but not least, everybody is asking me, okay, well, how does this affect the Phillies' opportunity to go back and maybe beat the Yankees in the 2010 World Series? Well, unfortunately, I don't think it really does. Because the fact of the matter is, you still have Cole Hamels, the reason that the Phillies lost Game 3 of the World Series, and you still have Brad Lidge, which is the reason that the Phillies lost Game 4 of the World Series. And unless Cole Hamels can get his act together, and unless the Phillies can get Brad Lidge back on track, or or go out and make another move to get another closer. By the way, Jose Valverde is out there, the Houston Astros closer. He's available for eight to $10 million, and I think the Phillies should go get him. But if you don't fix those two problems, you're in the same predicament that you were in in the first place. I trust Cole Hamels. I think he'll get back on track. I don't know about Brad Lidge. I want the Phillies to go out and get a closer. Somebody who's a plan B to Brad Lidge. I said it two months ago, I'm saying it now, and I'll say it again in February if the Phillies haven't done anything then. Everyone have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks as always for watching The Cheese Wizard. I'm DJ Gregory.